So we're going to look at volume. Uh, volume is the measure of space taken up by a solid object. And to measure volume, we use cubic centimetres or cubic metres, which we write like this. That's centimetres with a little number, a little number three. A lot of people get a little bit worked up and we're a little bit worried about working with volume. But to be perfectly honest, if we can work out the area of something, we can quite easily work out the, the void of something. So the three most popular shapes that you're going to come across are these three. So you've got your rectangle or your square, you've got your triangle, or you've got your circle. Okay. So if we're thinking about the area, all these are just two-dimensional, 2D. Okay, the flat surfaces, flat areas. Can we remember the formula to work out the area of a square or a rectangle? Um, length times width. Yeah. Okay. To work out the formula for an area of a triangle, it's the base times, height divided by two. times the height divided by two. And to work out the area of a circle, um, pi times the radius squared. Okay? And all the answers that we get, whether it's in metres or centimetres, are written like so. Okay? Centimetres squared. Volume is quite simply the three-dimensional versions of these. This then becomes a cylinder. Okay? So that's what the three-dimensional versions are. So it's gone from being two-dimensional flat to three-dimensional. So it's gone from being just a square or a rectangle, it's gone to being a box. It's gone from being just a triangle to being a prism or a toberon. It's gone from just being a circle to being a, a bin or a tin of beans. Okay? So all you need to do for volume is one extra sum because it's gone down from being two-dimensional to three-dimensional. So we just need one extra, one extra measurement. In this box we've got the length times the width. So all we're going to do now is times it by the height. This one, we've got the base times height divided by 2. All we're going to do then is multiply it by the length. This one, we've got the pi times r squared. We're just going to multiply that by the height. And all of a sudden, we've gone from area to volume by just doing one extra thing. So all you've got to remember, in, if you get a volume question, is look at the shape, what is the shape, remember the formula for that shape for its area, and then just multiply the last remaining thing, in this case height, in that case length, in that case height. And then the answers would become centimetres with a little number three, because we're three dimensional, we've cubed it, we've done three calculations. So that's all you've got to remember to work out the volume of something. Fairly straightforward, fairly straightforward. These are the popular shapes that are used, okay, in the maths questions. You've got a sphere, which is basically just a ball. You've got a cylinder, a box, a prism, and a corner, okay. Out of all those, you're expected to remember that, that and that, that, that and that. They're the three you're expected to remember. If they give you a sphere to work out, they'll give you the formula. If they give you a cone to work out, they'll give you the formula. They won't expect you to remember them all. But these three are the more popular three. Yeah, there's occasions where they might give you this particular formula or that formula. They might do that. Nine times out of ten, these are the three you'll be expected to know. Okay? So far, so good. So basically, this is it. Tin of beans, pi times radius squared times by height. Toberon, which is the prism, is the base times height divided by 2 times by the length. And for your box of Maltese, it's the length times the width times the height. Yeah? So, your first bit of action is to work out the volumes of those three items.